you know, I thought this was a good idea, but um, after three takes that weren't even recording or recording in the wrong format, I'm beginning to change my mind. <laughs> so uh, what's great about a time lapse? Um, they're great. You go through a nine hour process, you watch it in 30 seconds, it's very mesmerizing, it's very cool, but it's hard to learn from. Um, watching a full process video of nine hours is next to impossible because who has nine hours? Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my nine hours of creation and I'm going to squeeze it and condense it into this tiny, tiny uh, five-ish minute video and explain to you what my thought processes are, what I'm looking for, what I'm thinking about as I'm going through it. And hopefully that will be more consumable for you and help you um, along the way. So without further ado, let's get into this very cool character everybody knows and recognizes. Hopefully if you don't, you'll find out in the comments when you ask, I'm sure. Uh, first thing I do every time I start a piece like this is I'm going to start sketching. So I'm going to put me down in this little corner here and fit you there and I'm going to be watching the video and talking with you and probably pausing and stuff along the way so that we can enjoy this together. Um, so the first thing I do, rough sketches. Uh, rough sketches always help loosen up the hand and get the thought process going. This first sketch, what do I like? Um, the view's pretty cool. It's very in-character-esque. Um, it makes sense for the character, generally speaking, but it is not the best part of the character. The best part of this character, in my opinion, is his big crazy pig boar head. That's what I like the most, and I want that to be one of, if not the focal point of the piece. So while this pose is cool, and I could probably tweak it a little bit and make it really exciting and dynamic and fun, um, I feel like it's already a scrap because it's not putting focus where I want the focus to be. So, I cool, great, move on. Second pose, much closer, already right off the bat, I'm feeling better about it. Um, I'm putting him leaning forward, he's into a run, his big boar head is right there in the, in the picture, that's more like what I'm wanting. Great, what is not great about it? Uh, the angle is not great, he's a little too far, you know, I'm too far to the right as the viewer, he's kind of running off to my left, and I really want it to feel more like he's coming into you, like he might trip over you if, uh, if he passes you. Not all, I'm also not ex especially fond of the sword placement and the angles of the swords from a composition standpoint, from a where do I want the eyes to go on this piece. So it's not bad. Not great, not terrible. Cool, second piece, let's redo it. You can already see that my hand is starting to, to feel this piece better in this second drawing. Um, what do I like about it? Almost everything. I'm almost, I can already tell this is pretty much where I want to be. The um, foreshortening of that front leg is really there. Uh, it's right in your face. Uh, the back leg and the, the angles uh, and how far over he's leaning and his, um, you know, just the motion. You can really feel like he is trying to run as fast as he absolutely can. Um, the tusks are great. The arms going back is great. I'm still not a fan of the swords themselves. Okay, not terrible. What else do we need to tweak? Oh, there it is. We're going to put the swords back and behind his head instead that is definitely feeling more uh, exciting. So we're gonna go into this final um, sketch. One thing that I did is I moved his overall body slightly to the right so that his face and head is much more centered on the page. Um, the forms, human form is super easy. Like I almost always start to some degree with the trunk of the body and because I feel like that angle, that movement, the shoulders to the waist, um, helps me build off everything else. That's not a always and every time thing, but it is definitely a, a more common place for me to personally start. Um, legs, heads, and all that stuff can be tweaked off of that. His head is just 
just big bore head. So the base of that form is just a big old sphere. So that's his head. I know I want that to cover the majority of his shoulders and chest. So I've added that in. I'm getting the angles of all that. Um, the pig nose is up. The eyeballs are bugging out to the sides. That's nice. All of this is built off of understanding your shapes and your forms. I will do other tutorials on that stuff at some point. Um, if you are needing that kind of information, there are enormous gargantuan plethoras of understandings uh, of the human form that you should be watching. And you should watch as many of them as you can because they will um, help your brain start being able to see three-dimensionally on a two-dimensional page. Okay, hands are up and back, foot is back, looking great, cool, swords are back, I like that, excellent. Um, it's nice and fairly rough, clean right now, um, rough enough that I need to, to polish it and get it ready for inks. Um, so I'm going to be going through and doing that, finding the exact right tweaks to the leg, exact right tweaks to the hands and the feet. Um, do I want uh, one thing that I ran into here um, is this foot for his lead leg. Um, I don't want it to be too hidden, and I also don't want it to, you know, look like uh, his thing hanging down between his legs. So uh, I end up playing with that a little bit as well. By the way, that's the paper that I like to use, Fabriano Hot Press, 140 pound studio watercolor paper. It's very thick, it's very sturdy, it's also very smooth. It reminds me a lot of classic blue line comic book paper. Um, it will hold up to the watercolor-esque, it's really acrylic wash um, paint that I'm going to add to this later. And a Pentel Twist Erase Pencil. Uh, you can get both of those on Amazon or just about any uh, art store. Um, okay, so I'm tweaking the hands here. I'm getting the sword looking just right. I'm getting, I'm finding the knees. I'm finding all of these elements that I know I'm going to have to build my colors off of later because I don't like to do um, a lot of heavy blacks like you would in traditional comic book art. I like to do most of my shadows and lights and forms and stuff based on the colors that I use, not on the blacks that I start with. That's something I'm going to have to tweak because I do have a couple comic books I'm working on and they're both black and white, so they're, it's going to be necessary for me to know how to do that. All right, next we are uh, tweaking that foot, looking nice, excellent, finding all the little angles of the fur to make sure that I'm conceptualizing the lighting, and we're going straight into basic inks. This is my favorite inking pen. It is a Tombow Calligraphy um, Fudenosuke. Um, it is the WSBH, so it's the hard tip, which I like a lot. It's smooth. It gets the line weights exactly the way I, I like it. And then I do tiny line work with some Sakura Microns um, fine liners. And then here I'm just solidifying these lines a little bit more, getting them nice and solid. I've kind of changed that process a bit where I go really fine on the line work um, because I end up painting over most of it and I have to re-ink it afterwards and it just makes it a little bit easier to get cleaner lines when I don't have big thick lines that I'm also trying to match. So great, these are looking great, let's tape it down, boom, taping it down, why am I taping it down? I'm taping it down because even though this is good heavy paper, if I add too much moisture to it, it's going to do, it's going to start to buckle. It's going to start to curl up. Um, and that is something you want to avoid. Um, next, I am picking out colors for this initial fur. So I've got a nice neutral gray. Um, I feel like I want it to warm up a little bit and give it a, a earthier tone, a more natural tone than just flat gray and uh, in my references I feel like it had a, a bit of a yellow tint to it so I'm going to add just a little bit of ochre to this color 
uh, I mix it up and then what I like to do when I'm starting this is I'm adding a lot of water. I'm doing an acrylic wash. So wash basically just means I'm going from, I'm adding a lot of water in the beginning to less and less water as I progress to the very end where I'm basically using just straight acrylic paint. The brand I like the best is Golden Heavy Body Acrylics. All right, so I've mixed these colors. I'm getting the basic colors in. Great gray this is uh, this would be known as putting in your flats or blocking out your colors depending on what process you like to use whether it's digital or traditional um, this gray now what I've done is I have left if you see at the top of his head I've left that white and the reason I've left that white is because if you see that circle between the swords uh, in his head that is going to be the moon so I'm going to have this his uh, a main light source or one of the light sources coming from behind him and slightly above so that's going to give him this kind of rim light effect um, around his forms and then his chest area and then in, in front will be the darkest because that's where the light will have the most trouble getting to around the sides and the top of each one of these forms is going to be the lightest you'll see how this goes so I'm adding a little more yellow, uh, a little more ochre to that gray, which is uh, for the color on his um, skirt. Added a little bit of gray to the pinks to tone them down, to knock back their brightness, that saturation just a little bit. Now I'm mixing uh, the blue for his pants. So uh, that is a much darker gray. It's more like a graphite gray um, and then just some cyan blue mixed together again with a bunch of water on this first layer. I'm keeping a nice white edge on the far left of his leg for the purposes of the light is going, I'm assuming that the light is going, uh, the shadow of his body is gonna block most of his leg, but I wanna leave just a little peek of that, uh, even though it might not be totally accurate, which you don't always have to be totally accurate here. Um, but I'm leaving a little bit of white there so that there is some uh, separation from him and what will eventually be the night sky. Um, I'm filling that in. Darkest towards the center. Definitely darkest towards the center because that is where his not only his body is going to block the shadows, but um, where the light cannot get to as easily anyway. And then the opposite on the far right side. I've got uh, a little bit on the left side of his back leg because uh, there's nothing sh shadowing him. So I'm just leaving a tiny bit of white for separation and for a little bit of rim light on that back leg, but fully black down to the, or fully colored down to the center for the shadows. But on the far right, again, nice and light white. Uh, and I'm starting to darken in and create these deeper values um, for his leg so that we can um, create that shadowed effect. Now this is not unusual for me. Sometimes I will um, start and get a whole lot of color in um, of a flat and then I'll just randomly pick whichever color. I'm just going to start getting a little more detailed. Um, this one makes sense because the, that color is going to be nice and easy. All right, the gray is ready for some more shadows. So I've just added a little more, um, a little less water. I've added some brown to the eyes. I'm starting to get the darker grays to get the shadows. If you'll notice, I'm really dark on the underside of the mouth because that's going to be where the most shadow is. I'm starting to get a little bit of shadows between the eyes, but as the slope of the nose is coming out of his face, I'm lightening again because uh, some more light will bounce off and get to that. Uh, section. I'm deepening the shadows layers by layers, layer by layers in the skirt, just slowly darkening it. I've added probably some uh, raw sienna, I would guess. That's what that looks like, some raw sienna to my ochre and my gray to get those shadows. I'm deepening them, I'm darkening them, but I also want to leave some separation, some, some light areas so that you can see those textures. Again, darker under the chin. Get a real nice dark shadow there. All right, uh, skin tones. This is a fun one. 
So I'm usually going to use some variation of titanium white. Um, I like diarolide yellow because it's got a little bit of a warmer tone than standard yellow. I'll usually throw in some ochre. Uh, I will possibly throw in some green or some blue, just little touches of that to knock back that color and bring a more natural tone to the skin so it's not just like cartoony looking. Um, maybe a touch of alizarin crimson here. I'm mixing that together and then again plenty of water mixed to this to get this color nice and thin it'll go on nice and smooth and it'll be nice and light i'm again leaving the nice white area that is closest to the moon to show some tone now i'm going to darken that with um, some more uh, alizarin crimson some more ochre and then if you see that that little touch of green um, is going to really start to deepen those shadows uh, again wrapping around the arms these forms you got to understand your forms and shapes so that you know where to put these shadows for this kind of a thing again getting it darker and darker coloring the toes now I'm gonna get nice and dark now these I'm gonna actually start putting in uh, cast shadows or a version of cast shadows there on his chest from his mask uh, from his muscles I'm, um, I've added some magenta to my light pink so that I can have a shadow for his ears, for his nose. Looking nice. I've added a little bit of gray to the tusks so that the tusks start to separate. Uh, I've left them primarily white so that they, number one, so that you can tell that they're tusks, um, so that they're independent of the mask and um, but I've, I've added enough shadow to give them some form and shape. I love this part because I've added the blue to the eyes and all of a sudden the, uh, the color scheme is really starting to pop. It's always interesting to me how little things like that um, truly add to the overall effect of making something pop, making, some, making a piece jump out. So the nice light blues and then I'm following the shadows of the eyes and the same kind of form. A little darker more saturated towards the bo bottom with the nice bright light blue towards the top I'm darkening the shadows on the pants here very nice I've gotten the shadow I'm doing a nice um, slate blue on the swords on the bottom half of the swords a little bit of gray on the sword handles all right now we're getting into the background um, at, I'm, when I'm this far along on the actual process of the figure, I will tend to do the go ahead and do the background so that I can have a contrast measurement to figure out if I need to go darker or add any highlights or whatever for the form itself. So I'm doing a super pale um, white yellow for the moon because I want it to be nice and, and bright feeling, but I still want it to, to have that yellow moon feel. I'm going outside of my circle just to touch so that there is a glow and then I'm uh, going to wet this paper. If you see it looks like I'm doing nothing. I'm actually wetting this paper down with just straight up water. I'm not touching the figure. I'm only doing the background. Now what this will do is when I go in with the watercolor texture with the acrylic wash um, that color will tend to stop at the dry area and just kind of move into wherever it's been moistened. So this, is, uh, this does two things. One, it helps me with my blends because that color will, that paper being wet prior to adding color will help that stay wet and move nice when I continue to add color. And two, it will actually create a barrier between the wet and dry area to some degree. It's not foolproof. You do still have to be careful, but it, it will it helps a lot. So I'm getting that nice and light. I'm adding my first layer of blues. Notice that I'm keeping it as bright and light as possible around the moon itself because I want that glow. And then I'm darkening in a similar circular pattern around that moon as far out to the edges as I can. I'm taking a filbert brush, which is just a rounded tip brush and I'm going in with some slightly darker tones of that blue um, and manifesting some clouds here and I'm not being super strict or 
too hardcore on myself. Um, I'm just starting to play with layers and build it up. I'm not going too far back or down towards the horizon line for these clouds. Uh, that's another thing that you'd like to notice. I notice I put an angle on that horizon line to create uh, another layer of dynamics between him and uh, the page. And I wanted to do that to separate him from the ground and then also create some, again, some dynamics. So we're gonna add a little more water, a little more blue. We're gonna darken that blue with a little bit of gray. We're going to continue to layer. I actually lay it down at this point. Um, my desk is at an angle. And if that paper gets a little too wet, um, those the floating clouds will start to drip down and it'll ruin the effect. So the table is now nice and flat. Um, and I am adding more blue and then I'm at the same time I'm also adding some water to some of the areas where I've already put clouds and that's gonna like remove some color while also creating some um, edges to those clouds I don't know if you can see that there a little bit of darkness to separate the the depth of the clouds from um, from the sky continuing to layer those up get darker and darker same kind of process, duplicating this. I'm gonna get a nice cloudy, thick sky. Uh, let that dry for a while, come back. Now we're doing the ground. And this is uh, where layering is important. So I know it's going to be a dirt ground, so I did a dirt ground first, and then I'm adding some very dark grass, very tiny grass way back in the back, and then uh, that grass is gonna get thicker as we move forward. Uh, I go ahead and I add shadow, uh, a shadow to his form on the dirt ground first before I add more grass. I'm going to continue to add more and more layers of grass, greens, blues, um, dark grays mixed in together to create the, the various tones. And then the where it is in the shadow, I do darker than where it's outside of the shadows. Um, it's nice to have a little bit of um, a gradient shadowy tone towards the outside of the drawing itself that just creates some subtle uh, focus on the center of the page. I'm adding some light dirt movement to his feet here. Now I'm adding uh, just a touch of yellow to those highlights, all the areas that were white. I've done a really thin layer of white. Getting the clouds darker, touching up uh, with my re-inks. Um, and then the final stage here, just to really make that sky believable, um, I'm adding some stars with just some straight up white. And there you have it. Beautiful trio of anime heroes. Um, that piece was a lot of fun. I loved it. Um, this video was longer than I expected it to be, but I hope that it makes some sense. We're going to throw it up and see what happens. Maybe it'll be helpful. Um, I'll do a few of these to, to see how people like them. I'll probably get better uh, at summarizing some of these things or maybe focusing on a particular thing um, for each drawing to discuss or a particular element of each drawing to discuss. Um, but not a bad first go. Super long. Definitely wasn't five minutes, but I love you anyway. Until next time. Same Todd time, same Todd channel. Uh, Peace out.